Welcome back to The Grind. In this video, we are going to break down the Celestial Rift season. Now that all the permanent branches have been released, we still might see some temporary branches or limited time branches as we still do have the Mythic Ammo Rune that is available for four more days if you have not gotten that one and do plan to. But let's break down all the branches and discuss which ones might be beneficial for each type of player. Now, from the beginning, we have this um, mission boost branch, and I realized that I forgot to grab the 100% token bonus from this branch. I usually get that in the first couple weeks of this season after completing the discount branches. But the first branches that you typically want to go for are the discounted dragon and the base boost. So... That is because those two branches are at a 50% discounted cost for the first two weeks of the season. And that has been the structure for several seasons. And that I, they haven't mentioned any plans to change that unless they get rid of the base boost branch altogether. Um, but typically, my recommendation is to put as much of your sigils into those branches as possible during the discount because you're getting the resources for half the price and it's really hard to beat that because that progresses you to get more keys for the sigils that you would earn throughout this season. Now, depending on the dragon, you might want to focus on the base boost instead first and then put any extra into the dragon if you do happen to have more. Now, the thing to consider also is once the discount ends, if you cannot complete a branch that you started, you might not want to invest your sigils into that one after the discount period ends if, the if like, say, the dragon itself isn't going to benefit you much in the future anyways. So that's something to consider, but you want to put in as much as you can, even if you're not completing a full branch. I think it is much more beneficial that way. After that, I always typically recommend waiting to see all the branches kind of come out so you can see where to best focus your efforts. Now, we do have two offensive riders this season. Zephon is one, and Magnus is the other. Now, they're both pretty solid riders, and I do have individual videos on each of them. So for more detail about them, go check out those videos. But Magnus, I feel like, is a better rider for hunters because you end up having more attack um, which hunters typically need and it has some good rage regeneration but then Zephon the stats are more geared towards health and so warriors really benefit a lot from this rider because warriors really need health and if I'm not mistaken you'll have to confirm in my video specifically on Zephon but I think Zephon has the potential to have the highest amount of extra HP from the rider so check that one out if you're looking for a new rider uh, for a warrior. Um, and then as far as Magnus goes, it's great if you can pick this one up, but if you have access to Atlas, there are a few really good hunter riders there, specifically Anya or Anja and Sophia are amazing. Plus Zandra is a really good rider for a lot of rage. So the reason that Anja and Sophia are good is because they have the plus one ammo um, whereas Zandra doesn't have that, but has a huge amount of bonus rage generation. So those are a couple things to consider if you do need a rider. Now, as far as dragons go, and I'm probably actually going to go back through and, and pick up the first, um, it ends up costing a fair bit, but pick up, oops, the first um, keys from, not keys, sorry, the first shards from the rider branches, as well as from the dragons, so that I can just start collecting things overall and add it to my um, my stash of dragons and riders, even if I won't really be able to use them for anything. But Ethera is actually a fairly solid sorcerer, but really struggles with defenders, and unfortunately defenders are... Um, a big impact on the game and a lot of runs are going to have defenders second being the discount dragon was actually very nice because i felt like second was a very solid legendary dragon especially compared to the ones that are available this season 
Now, Sekit is a warrior, so he is very tanky, but he does have a death gaze spell and a way to freeze towers and gain back rage. So he really had a lot of good things going for him. So check out my video on Sekit if you're interested in figuring that out if you haven't gotten him already or you're deciding if you want to finish the branch or not. But I felt like he was a good one. Then we have the resurrection branch, which is Necrix this season. And it's very cool to get as a like monumental dragon. Um, but unfortunately, it's just like with the the meta of today's bases he's he just will struggle but i mean it's still a fun dragon if you like the looks if you enjoy flying him then that's what really matters right because you're going to be able to find bases that you can attack with any dragon you choose to use it's just not going to be the best for the highest tier competitive play especially in atlas and that goes for most of these dragons unfortunately now Jin is an interesting one Jin is um Oh, cool. I didn't know he could pull that up from here. Jin is an interesting uh, invoker. I felt like he kind of struggled because all his spells were such a small radius, or his only spell actually, was such a small radius. You could, couldn't really hit multiple towers with it. And his invoke shot, while it does a lot of damage, is also a very small radius. So you can't hit multiple towers with it either, like you could with Morak. So I didn't really enjoy flying Jin because only being able to hit one tower with the spell and with his invoke shot made it challenging for him to manage a full long base. But hey, if you're a lower tier and you're only facing islands, uh, like one island worth of towers, then Jin actually would be would be pretty decent and. Oh, we can actually look at the spotlight video from here. Um, I won't play the whole thing, and it's going sideways. What have I done? Let's cancel this and just forget that. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Um, but if you're really at lower tier and you think invokers are cool, you want to learn to fly invokers, and you like the look of Jin, Jin could actually be a solid dragon once you get used to flying him. At lower tiers, like less than two, level 200, when you're really only facing bases that have one island worth of kill uh, towers. Once you get to the long island where you have island four and five filled with eight to 10 strong towers, it's gonna be hard to manage that with Jin, especially with a defender. Now we've covered uh, most of the dragons. We'll come to the festive dragon a little bit later, but first, Let's talk about the Crystal Howitzer and the Cosmic Orary branches. So these are like the tower branches. And that's kind of on top of the base boost, which typically has been like the resource, the building resource, fortification resource branch. But then we started having these tower branches to get resources specific to the new towers that they have been creating. Now, the Crystal Howitzer branch has a ton of timers, and it comes along with a lot of gold chests as well. Plus, you can choose to get a lot of extra Electrum bars, which are needed to level up these new Electrum towers. And so it is a very good branch to get a lot of resources that you will need to continue to advance your base to higher levels. And a lot of players, as they progress through the game, really struggle to get those resources. Some players, maybe further down will struggle with egg tokens. Um, some players struggle with PVP resources primarily, um, but in order to progress in the game, you really need those base building resources. So the Crystal Howitzer is one of the branches that people view as a must have. So for the majority of players, it is get the first two discount branches as a must have, and then wait, save up for that base uh, Crystal Howitzer branch as the next must have. And then after that, you kind of got to pick and choose what you want. Now, the Cosmic Orary branch is good if you need Cosmic Charges. It also has some Platinum Chests throughout, which I'm probably going to get this branch because I'm trying to save up a bunch of Platinum Chests for a big opening. Plus, I want to have extra Cosmic Charges. If they don't ever allow you to merge Towers into the Cosmic Orary, then I'm going to have to build a second one on my own, and I'm going to need those Charges. So I'll probably end up getting this for my last two keys, but I also am going to get the Festive Branch, which also has keys that I would need anyways. So um, actually, is it just one key? Oh no, there's another key over here, I think. Um, so, so I would get them from that anyways to get my 20th key, but I'm gonna get this branch no matter what because of this repeatable draconic chest note at the end. 500 sigils gets you four draconic chests and you can do that 106, 150 times for a total of 600 draconic chests, which is one of the best investments of your sigils in the game so far. 
including spending rubies on super sigil chests to finish off this branch because you get so much resources from these draconic chests you get um you get let's just pull it up and take another look at it you can get you can get egg tokens actually a lot of egg tokens can come from this you get a good amount of sigils for your effort it's about the same as spending rubies on gold chests so um, it's very good for doing this at the end of the season and preparing to save them for the following season so you can complete the discount branches at the start. You also get a good amount of timers, like quite a lot of timers, and lots of PvP resources, as well as Mythic Fragments. Now, uh, there are some other things in here that you might not care to get. Uh, one of the things that people don't quite like is that the Festive Dragon Shards are in here. And even if it is this season where Asriel is the Festive Dragon you'll still get shards for the prior festive dragons. Just they'll drop at a less frequent rate and you'll get less of them overall. But until you get enough to fully max that dragon to end game tier, you'll continue to get old festive shards, which is going to make it harder to get the shards for the current festive dragon. So as far as catching up, if you've never done Draconics before and you really want to max out Asriel, it's going to be harder for you because you're going to see a lot of shards from the the prior festive dragons however i still do recommend this because the branch itself gives you enough shards to get it to obsidian tier which for a lot of players is going to be enough for them and then if you are an end game player that wants it at max tier you probably have the resources to get it much higher especially if you're investing in the draconic chest and i recommend doing this every season that it's available and plan on that as your season so really the ideal plan for a season is max out the discount branches at the start, the first two discount branches, save everything for the tower branch, and then get the festive as well and max out the draconic chests. Now, obviously that limits you to, that pretty much is a full season right there. And then there are a lot of other branches that are quite nice to get. So you might have to adjust your plans and skip out on a crystal howitzer branch uh, in order to get a dragon or a rider that you need. And that is a personal decision that you will have to make depending on your personal situation um, and what you're looking for. But that's kind of the basic structure that would be the ideal. And so while we're here, why don't I just go ahead and claim as much of this as I can while it has, at least I believe it still has the bonus rewards. And we're gonna get as many gold chests as we can. We're also saving up gold chests for a massive gold chest opening one season in the near future, hopefully. And now that they finally have got the open all button for chests, that will make things so much easier. I'm so grateful that they finally did that. If you did not notice yet, when you go into your chest, there is an option that you can click to open all of your chests, which saves so much time, especially for bronze chests. Some people are opening 20,000 plus bronze chests and having to do that 10 at a time is just absurd. It takes hours of their time and now that you can just pop open 5,000 at a time it'll go by in no time so I'm very grateful that they finally implemented that um, I don't know why it took so long because they've had that in other aspects of the game uh, for a little while longer but there we go we've got the branch completed this prize is free so we'll go ahead and take those and then we have the repeatable draconic chest as well now I'm probably not going to grab those just yet um, because I well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Actually, I'm going to save the sigils that I have now in case another limited time branch comes up that I want to grab. I'll have the sigils on hand. And then at the very end of the season, I can use the um, the super sigil chests to finish off the draconic chest at the end of the Azrael branch. So let me know what your plan was this season, what you did, what you're planning to do still, and how you've enjoyed this season so far. I do hope this video was helpful. Good luck, and I will see you in the next video.